Um, my name is Brian Small, um, and I'm here this evening to talk to you about two tours, both of them to Cape May in the eastern US. So I'm just going to go back to the beginning here. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, we do two tours to Cape May, one in the spring and one in the autumn. Obviously, they are by, by and large bird orientated tours, unlike the other tours that you've seen this evening. The range of uh, mammals and reptiles is very limited. There's certainly some butterflies, but more or less we concentrate on looking at birds. So my first slide shows where Cape May is. At the top, you can see New York and then Philadelphia. And if you follow all the way down to the bottom of the image, you can see Cape May, which is on a promontory between the Atlantic and Delaware Bay. You can fly in to Newark or you can fly in to Philadelphia. From Newark, you follow the Garden State Parkway down to Cape May. And from Philadelphia, you cross the Walkman Whitman Bridge and then come down through the Vinelands and Woodland to Cape May. And we don't travel around a lot. It's a single centre tour. So if you come down, the Cape May is at the very bottom of the promontory here, and it's a relatively small area. So you're talking about a two and a half mile square area of land, which is where we tend to spend most of our week. The hotel is a traditional seafront hotel. If you imagine, if you've ever been in the UK and you've been to Southwold, which is where I live, which is a, a Victorian seaside town, Cape May has an atmosphere which is pretty much the same as that. It's uh, a bit bigger though. Um, your hotel, the Seacrest, is right next to the beach and you look out over into the Atlantic and south across towards Delaware to its south. It's a very simple hotel. The rooms have large beds and catering facilities, fridges and so on. Um, and you'll spend uh, nine nights in the hotel uh, and we tend to then go out on day trips from the hotel. So I'm going to talk first of all about spring and both of the tours, spring and autumn, are timed for the optimum migration of various groups of species. Spring, largely warblers, and shorebirds. And as you can see on this picture, we get large pans of, um, these are American dunlin, which are the very black bellied and rufous backed birds mixed in with handfuls of short billed dowagers. Most people come to Cape May for the pas passerine or near passerine perching birds. And although Cape May is at the same latitude as Madrid, the spring is quite late. And so even though we're there in mid-May, the leaves are just coming through. So it's quite a citrus green background here to uh, a yellow-billed cuckoo. And one of the joys is that you do tend to get really excellent views of the birds. These are all my own photographs, which I've taken just as I'm leading, just pick my camera up, take a few pictures. So looking at the warblers and perching birds, you've got yellow-billed cuckoo and then into the, the spring warblers. American wood warblers are particularly beautiful and finely coloured. An American red start, very black backed, brilliant fiery orange flashes on its flanks and wings and the sides of its tail, which it tends to flick up and down and flashing the orange. You've got a bay breasted warbler, a male again with its rufous bay cap, chest. Females are very much duller than that. They're much more bright yellow, yellow green above. Um, and they've come and feed in the, in the trees. This is actually taken at the Cape May Bird Observatory. A black pole warbler looking a little bit like a black and white warbler. Again, a male here with its lovely black cap, black and almost humbug streaked back and a bit of yellow in the wings and bright yellow legs. And we spend quite a bit of our time just walking slowly around some of the areas in the in the town, looking for the for warblers and raptors going over. 
So I'm just, the first slide slides show the warblers primarily. One of the most difficult one, I'm sorry, this isn't the best of photographs, is a Canada warbler. One of my favorite of all with its lovely necklace of, of spots, its eye ring, quite a difficult, but slightly secretive compared to some of the other warblers, hence the, the, the poor quality of the photograph. In the spring, as well as the leaves coming out in the trees, you've got the beech plum along the beach, which is in flower. And here you've got a magnolia warbler. You can see the, the white spots in the tail. This is a female, a gray above with a flashy bright citrus, yellow flanks, black streaked. And again, they just seem to be so numerous that they come out and see you. You can call them out just making a noise. The egg yolk, bird, the prothonotry warbler, the prothonotries were clerics of the Pope and they used to wear bright yellow clothing and so prothonotry, prothonotry warbler is named because of the bright yellow colour like, like the clerics and they're quite a difficult bird to see, we got two lot spots for them, one of them very close to the hotel, one where we drive inland to a patch of woodland in Belle Plaine Forest, again it's a fantastic bird to see. You've already seen this, this was shown in Florida. So this is the yellow-throated warbler, which you can see either around the town itself or again at Belle Plaine, another beautiful warbler. Um, you get to see perhaps up to 25 species of warbler in spring and in autumn. And there are two stars which we always like to see, the really flashy Blackburnian warbler. This is taken along a little tiny boardwalk near to the lighthouse. And you're just looking through them, the birds are flitting around in small flocks. And suddenly you catch a glimpse in the leaves of this fiery orange throat. And you then just wait and out comes this amazing bird. And you just watch it in the oak trees, catching insects or picking caterpillars off of the tree. So that's especially nice to see. And then Cape May warbler. Cape May warbler again, named because the first specimen was collected at Cape May. Beautiful tiger striped chest, rufous cheek patch black cap. And again, really flashy. We try to make sure that we, we see these and sometimes they can show especially well. Most of the warblers we've just seen are moving north and they're not breeding in the area. And they're moving through to the the Canadian tiger, the vast expanse of coniferous forest up in the north. So we're picking up these as, as migrants, not the yellow-throated warbler, but uh, certainly Cape May is, is on its way north. As well as spending our time around Cape May, up along the, 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 the coast of Delaware Bay, up in the north, you've got Highsleville, and you've also got one or two beaches along the, 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 the coast there, the shore. And then there are other places, Stone Harbour. And we spend time looking for shorebirds. And the timing of the tour is such that we're waiting really for the horseshoe crabs. The horseshoe crabs come and spawn in Delaware Bay. And all of the eggs wash ashore. You may have seen some early films of David Attenborough walking along a beach with red knot and semi-palmated sandpipers running ahead of him. And those will have been filmed on the beaches here. And so up at Heisnerville, you've got these large pans, which I've already shown you this slide. You get big pans, which when the tide is in, all the birds come in and they roost. They look a lot, but compared to the semi-palmated sandpipers, this is just a small group, the semi-palmated sandpipers come in and sing a lovely trilling song and you just just watch them and they're just so amazingly tame and you get very close you get flocks of black skimmers you've got the Forsters turns again here you've got short billed dowichers and and the dunlin and and you just wander around there are killdeer nesting you've got bald eagles flying over peregrines sweep in and and flush the birds up. Nothing creates panic like a peregrine. On the beaches, you get boat-tailed grackles. It's very, very noisy. The laughing gulls that you can see in the background make so much noise as the eggs get washed ashore. And there are hundreds and thousands of birds feeding 
along the beach and you just to stand around and watch them and pick through them, looking out into the bay, perhaps for great northern divers. The red knot, the red knot, this is a mixture in here. You can see some black chested turned stones. You can see some red chested knot and then some smaller waders, which are the semi palmated sandpipers. And although this is a, a fantastic scene, there is no doubt that the birds are in decline, partly because of the usual climate change pressures, but also that the horseshoe crabs are being harvested to make things like, like crab meat and cat food. But there's a lot of legislation going on to try to restrict that. So hopefully, hopefully at some stage in the near future, their numbers might start to increase. And like the warblers, these are all on their way north. They time their migration so that they arrive in Delaware Bay, just as the horseshoe crabs are spawning, where they fatten up, they increase their body weight, almost double their body weight so that they can continue north into Canada, into breeding grounds north of the tiger onto the tundra. And there's a, a picture of the rather prehistoric horseshoe crab on the beach. This is actually at, at uh, Stone Harbour, um, but they just come ashore, they get washed, washed ashore after they spawn and, and quite a number of them sadly die after spawning. Into the woodlands, I showed you where Belle Plain Forest was. We go into Belle Plain because partly for a change of scenery, it's a large forest managed area, um, but there are certain species that you get breeding there. You get a Cadian flycatcher. This is an oven bird, which is almost pipit-like, slightly olive brown back, heavy, strong black streaks. But what you can only just see a glimpse of there is the, the orange crown stripe and they creep around on the ground or they sit in trees and, and, and sing. Acadian flycatcher, sometimes Louisiana water thrush. Um, we'll try for hooded warbler, yellow throated warbler, prothonotary warbler, and then also be spotted toeys and, and, and so on. And as well as the birds, there's black spice, black but swallowtail, not as many butterflies as, as you would get in, in Arizona or Texas, but a fair range, just an introduction to the families. So you get a flashy black swallowtail and a not quite so flashy Horace's um, dual wing. Back to where, to, to the landscape here. The, so the hotel is at the very bottom of the map and close by within a mile, mile and a half, you've got the med meadows and you get Cape May Point State Park. And the state park is famous for various places, woodland areas and so on. And so a lot of people sometimes say, well, I'll come out and they want to go back to the hotel for the afternoon. And so having found somewhere for lunch, after lunch, I've often run people back where they can have a walk through the town and they walk on the beach or just take time out. It's a very relaxing holiday, but there's always plenty to see. And just on the beach in front of the hotel, you can get American oyster catchers. They come and feed, despite the fact that, that lots of people walk along the beach, there are always things to see on the beach. If it's not an oyster catcher, there'll be sandaling. You get purple martins coming. They have in the state park, at the car park itself near the lighthouse, they've got hanging uh, nesting uh, gourds for the purple martins. To nest in and they'd sit around early morning on the roofs catching the sun quite a large martin and they're all making this this call and, and flying about got the the uh the red-winged blackbird sitting in the tops of the bushes calling ruby-throated hummingbird again another very very tiny bird which zap and it's gone and sometimes they'll sit preening early in the morning and you get a chance to look at them just just a glimpse of the ruby throat coming in as they turn their head and the light catches the uh, iridescence of that what looks like black throat actually sh sparkles red. Tree swallows, nest boxes are put up for tree swallows. This is a, a male sat on its box and they become incredibly tame and this is again just by the side of the car park at the state park. In the 
meadows, you get areas of, of wetland and, and shallow water for stilt sandpipers, beautiful breeding bird, uh, again on its, on its way north, and on the beach up at Stone Harbour especially, as sometimes they breed at, at Cape May, but more in the north now, going up towards, towards uh, uh, Atlantic City. Beautiful little tiny, almost teddy bear-like bird with, they run around with their black and orange beaks and orange legs. And again, the bird which due to the human pressure on the beaches is in decline and, and Stone Harbour is a particularly nice place to see them, both because it's a nice place to have a walk, but also they, they, they show really nicely to the crowds. Aviri, uh, it is an American thrush, one of the small American Catharis thrushes. Uh, sort of again, a nice orange brown above with soft markings on its underparts. They don't often show quite as well as this, so quite a secretive bird. And we like to look around, we walk through the meadows and through the woodlands looking for these. And finally, Cape May being what it is, is a migration watch point. You get, occasionally you get rarer birds coming north. This is a Mississippi kite, which circled over the, the uh, Hawk Watch platform. And one day with a group, I had a message from a friend of mine saying that someone had just reported a magnificent frigate bird. So we're just driving around the lake in Cape May and I looked up and there it was flying over us. And so we all got out and watched it and then spend the next hour touring around the, the town before it eventually flew out to sea and wasn't seen again. So Cape May in spring, we tend to look for shorebirds and warblers. Cape May in autumn, you've got a slightly different range of species. Um, you get the warblers coming south, you get the waders coming south, but also you get a lot of um, hawks, raptors, coming south. This is the beach at the very tip of Cape May. You can see the lighthouse in the, in the distance. This is the beach right in front of the hotel. So you cross the road, quite a quiet road. And on the beach in autumn, you get a collection of black skimmers. They don't gather there in the spring. So in the autumn, you get the black skimmers, you get Forster's turns, you'll get ring-billed gulls, you get royal turns, and they come and sit in the group um, and Again, just being America, birds just seem to be so tame. It's a bird photographer's delight. And again, here you can see what we're all looking at. You can see the black skimmers. You can see the, the, the Forster's turns in the back. You've got an out of focus royal turn. And, and again, just they just pose for the cameras. And here they are in flight. There's a, a youngster here, which is, they're just weird, almost prehistoric looking birds with their beaks. And you can see them coming in and they skim low through the waves, actually in the sea with their lower mandible, which is longer than the upper mandible. And as they touch a fish, it snaps shut and they catch the fish in that way. An amazing thing to see when they come in in groups and, and feed in the flat, calm shallows. And there's a, an adult, molting adult and a young royal tern. Again, so one of the other things about Cape May in the autumn is we tend to go to a famous place called Higby's and they have what's called the morning flight project there where the birds which are migrating south suddenly change their mind and rather than migrate south they come in and they move north and they go up round Delaware Bay. So you've got Higby's here but you also get the Hawk Watch platform near the lighthouse and the Hawk Watch platform looks over Bunker Pond and many's the hour that the group has spent two or three hours just sat on there. There's counts going on since the early 1970s. They've had an organized raptor count, hawk watch count, um, where they count for two months every autumn. They'll count the, the birds of prey and other species that, that are moving south. And we can join them. There are volunteers there helping everybody. And you look out over Bunker Pond and you'll get large numbers of raptors. The most common would be sharp-shinned hawks, Cooper's hawks, Merlin, American kestrel, um, big numbers of things like turkey vulture, black vulture, bald eagle. It's, it's a pretty spectacular place. I've seen in three hours, I've seen something like 1,500 sharp-shinned hawks go over, maybe 500 
uh, American kestrels and moved south in the day. And what they're hunting, they're hunting dragonflies and small birds and, and the other migrants which are coming through. Uh, Merlins are particularly like things like blue jays and, and northern flickers which are coming through. And we just stand there soaking it all in, watching the birds move. And the pictures I'm about to show you have all been uh, taken from the Hawkwatch platform. So you've got American Kestrel, superb little bird with translucent spots in its wing, beautiful lead gray and, and raw sienna color on its back. A peregrine on its way from the tundra heading south. They're uh, like, just they sit in there. This is a, one which was sat on a pylon. The whole group got out, walked up to the bottom of the pylon and looked up at it. Just simply incredible. A young bald eagle come up over the over the hawk watch platform. And there are so many things to see. There'll be Cooper's hawk passing through and sharp shin. Sometimes don't really know what, what to look at. A Cooper's hawk. Cooper's hawk is halfway in size, perhaps, between a sharp shinned and a goshawk. It's bigger than our sparrowhawk in, in Europe. It's got a well, this is a youngster, so you can see the streaking on the underparts. But one of the distinct parts about it is it's got a rounded tail compared to a square cut tail with sharp shins. Sharp shins have very rapid wing beats. These are slightly slower wing beat, but they have that, that shape to them. Ospreys. So in Chesapeake Bay and Delaware Bay, there are perhaps 1,500 pairs of osprey and even more going up the coast between Cape May in New York and you get large numbers of them come in and they fish in the pond they'll grab a fish and then they go and sit on again telegraph poles in the town where you can drive along you suddenly see one with a fish and you get out and they just just looking look right at you as you're looking up at them from the hawk watch platform and then in the autumn you can get unusual species for anyone who's been to Texas and further south a Swainson's hawk isn't necessarily all that unusual but up in the northeast of the US it is and this is a youngster this is a, a young Swainson's hawk. So moving away from the hawk watch platform the salt marshes and salt grass are in the autumn filled with herons you've got great egrets you've got snowy egrets here you'll get again boat-tailed grackles again in small parties all sitting around looking at the sky and displaying to each other, even in the even in the autumn, you get the shorebirds. You get ibis. This is an American avocet. Again, a very fine bird. This was taken up at Brigantine, which is a large area of of a wetland, a wildlife refuge, uh, north of Atlantic City, about forty miles. It's about the furthest that we drive from the town. So we'll have a day out, drive, gather, get some lunch from a local deli. And then we'll drive up there for, for a day. And we drive around these large pans where they're filled again with, with waders and there'll be ibis and herons and there'll be sparrows. Get buzzed by peregrines, northern harriers come through. Again, in autumn, piping plover, not quite as brightly coloured, but just a few hang around before they migrate further south for the autumn. We usually manage to get a few at the end of September and beginning of October. If you want to hone your wader skills, it's a particularly good place for identifying waders. This is a juvenile semi-palmated sandpipers with its scaly anchor-shaped marks on its back, a short bill, and then compare that with a western sandpiper. Western sandpipers are usually, this is a youngster as well, but it's already molted some of its mantle feathers here. These are already new no longer juvenile, it's got a longer bill, a slightly different way of feeding. In the, in the reeds of the, of the state park, you're gonna get bobolink. They come in and, and feed, brightly colored, and then you can hear them as they, as sometimes they just get flocks of them heading over and they've got this link call, which you know that they're around. A swamp sparrow, swamp sparrow is probably not a good example of a sparrow because you'll see a lot more of other common things like savannah sparrow, uh, song sparrows and so on are much more numerous. But again, this is one nice to see if you can find one as it skulks around in the reed bed. An autumn Cape May warbler. 
lovely autumn colors of the trees. You've got the tiger stripe. This is, this is a male in the autumn. Females are not quite so strongly, strongly colored, but you can still see the tiger stripes. And they've got this plain creamy white, off-white bar on their median coverts, which we tend to look for. This again is taken right on the edge of the, the bird observatory, where we walk slowly around, usually not just us, but other groups of bird watchers. There are two festivals, the Cape Migration in May. And there's also an Autumn Migration Festival. And there are lots of people around to talk to you about birds and just share their experiences. And it's such an amazing atmosphere, very friendly. Black and white warbler behaving like a nuthatch. Northern Perula, again, beautiful color, not as brightly colored as spring birds may be, but again, still, still beautiful. And again, these are one of the more numerous of the migrating warblers. And you get palm warblers. This is a, this is a, a, a Western palm warbler. A lot of the Eastern palm warblers like this, which are more brightly colored, um, go and leave early. We just get the trailing uh, few Eastern palm warblers, but most of them are drabber, almost looking a bit like a, a chiff chaff and behaving like a chiff chaff too. Again, showing well, just, it's just this is just right by the edge of the car park where we'll wander around. And then just occasionally other things, we'll find a night hawk perched in a tree, just roosting on its way south. Northern flickers, we get flocks of northern flickers and blue jays calling early in the morning, sweeping around, pursued by merlins sometimes and, and sharp-shinned hawks. And they just sit out amazing amazing views this is a view actually from the hawk watch platform where there's a little patch of trees and then we wouldn't be cape may without talking about the monarch monarchs numbers fluctuate this far north sometimes there'll be hundreds sometimes thousands sometimes tens of thousands and in the early morning they'll come in sit in the bushes feeding in the flowers ready before they'll they'll suddenly just all fly up and, and head off south there'll be others this is an american lady similar to our uh, painted lady which also occurs there you've got ha a halloween pennant you get dragonflies are quite numerous in the autumn a lot of the american kestrels and merlins chase them around and catch them on the wing and this is a carolina saddlebag looking a little bit worse for wear you get black saddlebags you're going to get green darners and, and so on and so forth and finally, this is the view, sunset from the hotel. At the end of the road, you've got the sunset going down towards Cape May Lighthouse. 